a great friend of ours, Mr. Thomas Lynch. He's a senior engineer, and we had invited him to Lucknow, which is on Friday, but because of his flight connections, he couldn't stay on until Friday, so we decided to open a space in LACNIC Technical Forum so we can listen to his presentation. The presentation is private MAC address for IXPs. So let us welcome Thomas Lynch with a big round of applause. Hello, good morning. Well, they put up my presentation because I sent it a while ago. FTL private MAC addresses. FTL private MAC addresses. Otherwise, I can tell you about this. It's only six slides, but I will start anyway. Now, this presentation is a bit selfish because I want to hear from you what you think about what I am doing. Now, it, what happened to me, it occurred on several occasions that I have to upgrade a device. I have a small device and we purchase a larger device. So we start to work on the different interfaces and then the IXP doesn't come up. You configure and you configure. You take out the, you do lots and lots of things and then you remember. The IXPs filter through MAC address. And what I had was a MAC address one and now I have Mac two. So I have to call the IXP or enter the website and write the new address. So all this is at three in the morning when you are changing the device, when you are in the window maintenance and you have five minutes left before you finish. So I said, well, I have this spectacular idea. Let us use private MAC addresses. What is a private MAC address? Well, in fact, this is locally managed or locally administered in the RFC. So I don't exactly recall this, but this is like the second bit or the first octet, something like that. And this has to be in one, which is locally managed. If it's in zero, it's a global MAC address. So basically, all those that begin with 0206, hexa, and there you get the hexa, and so on. Well, I'm just making this up here. So there are a whole set of MAC addresses that are locally managed. Now, what I do is when an IXP asks me for a MAC address, I generate a locally managed MAC address. In my case, my autonomous system is 2473. So I use 02, locally managed, 0473, and I use the remaining octates to include uh, further information. For example, the autonomous system of the IXP, of, of the route server of the IXP, in those octates and some local information of that company. Now, what do I save with that when I'm carrying out a change like the one I just described at three in the morning? And this is some publicity I want to introduce peering manager. So then I change all this and I allow the I change the entire device, I put a new device with all the wiring, I configure what I have to configure, and then Ping Manager comes and pastes the configuration of the IXP. So basically, it's to include configuration. So this adds the MAC address 0204, etc. Now, what am I avoiding with this? 
when I change the router or if the port crashes or if I have port zero and it stops working for whatever reason, then I change this to one. I put the MAC address to this other port. And there's another issue. I would mention who the vendor is, but there are devices from a given vendor that we detected. I don't know if this has to do with the software, but they have like a pool of MAC addresses. And start assigning this port zero, port one, port two, port three, port four, port five, port six. And when you turn this off and you turn it on again, it start assigning this as Oh, here we are then. So the interface starts start turn, turning on and the MAC addresses get assigned. And it has occurred to me again at three in the morning. Everyone is desperate. My XP doesn't pick up. And finally, it's because the MAC address was wrong. The only downside to this and someone mentioned at a previous meeting at Nadnog in Atlanta. I don't recall exactly if it was someone from the LACNIC community who said that an IXP wanted to use this, but they said, well, this has to be a public Mac. So they got a coffee machine at home that was connected to Wi-Fi and they had a fixed Mac. I don't recall who that was and I don't remember the IXP. Now this is a selfish part. Why not use these? And I don't know if I'm breaking something or if this has, if this has to do with security or if there is a best common practice that states that you should not use it. I didn't find anything at all. So anyone here has the answer, please let me know. So this is the coding. How do I go back? All right. These were the private MAC addresses. It's That's the reference down there. And that would be all. A comment, you said whether to use them or not, and the only potential problem I see is that you have the possibility of having collisions with another participant that uses a scheme for a different assignment. Let us assume you're using a pattern to assign the virtual max, and if you don't have an agreement with that IXP to say, well, this is the pattern that the addresses have to follow, potentially you could use the one I am also using, and we all assign the same addresses. Yes, that's right. On the other hand, it is good to use the private max because there are vendors who reuse the global ones, which in theory, they are global, that there are multiple studies that show that these are reused. Yes, I heard that half of the world use these and the other half the others until you get a device and well, for example, you go to Japan, you go to Colombia and you say, well, this doesn't work. Wesley, well, who's first? I'm sorry, Paolo, okay, go ahead. Pablo, tweet from Cavace, Argentina. The first is the obvious answer. The locally managed addresses is, are to be used locally and not for the exchange. Is uh, is we're using a private address uh, with an IXP for exchange purposes, so the probability of collusion exists. So the IXP won't like that. And the other point is. What I see many people do, and nobody can object this, is that when you have a router, take a router out, you put the same MAC address to the next router, which is valid, which is public from your own device that you won't be using at the same time. And that has already been registered, and you don't have to ask anyone. So that would be my suggestion. Uh, it's good, a good point. Wesley, 
Well, before saying anything, I like the policy proposal. Well, just joking. So this is interesting, and I have come across things such as this. Now, what I found interesting and what worked for me was to open tickets with the traffic exchange point prior to the maintenance window. And I said, well, put this Mac and release this other Mac together with the one in production so that I can have the two operating simultaneously. And when we close the window tomorrow, I will notify you so you can revoke the previous Mac. Because precisely what the guys were commenting on, some might decide to use the same standard that you are using, and they will have collisions. Yes, that's quite true. There are many IXPs that can send an email or even in their web page where you add s something stating, well, as from tomorrow or from now in one week's time, I will be using MAC address 00184, etc. Yes, go ahead. Hello, good afternoon. Galvan from ESPN. What Wesley said is what we are doing actually at uh, uh, and they typify the two available Macs to do the maintenance window and all the work. And it has worked. It has really worked. Maybe not in your case. Well, I don't do this in the uh, in .br. Well, uh, but an option could be to add your own your IXP. Your IXP can provide a Mac address, and nick.br has uh, its own Mac, and we do this for the quarantine test and prior to activation. So this could be an option to provide the two. So I'm just giving you an idea. Thank you. Fernando, one further comment. In addition to the filtering that you might do with the Mac addresses in layer two, You also have to bear in mind that in the case of IPv6, the link local addresses will be based on the MAC address. So not to affect that. So I said, I was saying that this has to be stable if you're doing enforcement of kind of filtering policy at IPv6 level. Yes, perfect. Now, notifying in advance is for normal cases, but not for the vendor who shall not be named, who restarts. I couldn't hear you, Carlos. Could you repeat? Yes, the thing of notifying ahead of time the issue of the Mac works, but not for the vendor who you didn't wish to name. Well, that's quite terrible. Yes, it is. Uh, it's a security feature. I am not going to say this out loud. I'll get into trouble. I'm making this presentation on my own behalf. The vendor would kill me. Do we have any questions from online participants? No questions from online participants. Unless you wish to sing now. Well, if you pay me, I might. Thank you, Thomas. Thank you. So with this 